Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and a very warm welcome if you're new. A few months ago, Monster High released their brand new Generation 3 dolls and let me tell you, I was ecstatic. It took ages for the dolls to come out over here in South Africa and right now stocks are still extremely limited. However, I did manage to get my hands on two of my favorites through Amazon. Ta-da! I got Frankie and Draculaura. They were always my favorites from generation 1, and I'm glad to say that hasn't changed with the new generation. Today's video is extra exciting because not only can I take them out of the box to show you guys, I also have something special planned for one of them. I won't be going into too much detail though. Some of my fellow customizers have already done really great in-depth reviews on these dolls, so I'd recommend checking out their videos for that. So, without further ado, let's jump in. As we would expect with Monster High, the dolls come in really pretty boxes. I know they've been criticized for the box art, but I thought it's quite cute. I love that they stuck close enough to the character's original designs that they still feel like themselves, but they're different enough to feel fresh and new and exciting. Although it's not the case for all the dolls in the lineup, Frankie and Draculaura both have saran hair. It's super soft, but has a kind of slippery, oily texture that you can easily get out with a wash. The core Frankie came with a letterman jacket, backpack, sunglasses, their dog Watsi, an instant camera, these adorable tiny photographs, an eye coffin, and a pizza slice with spiders on it for some reason. They're so cool. My Draculaura came with a weirdly bent arm that made her look very sassy, but I had to fix that off camera. She also came with a pink robe with bat wings on it, a squishy bat pillow, this bat ear headband, some nail polish and a basket, a squishy glow-in-the-dark face mask, a bottle of cherry juice that can actually open, her pet Count Fabulous, and a little pet bed. That's a lot of accessories for a doll that's not even part of the main lineup. But, of course, what excites me the most as a customizer, and what I think excites most of the doll community, is the wide variety of body types the new generation has now. Frankie is the tallest and lankiest, which is already cool. But the fact that they have a prosthetic limb is amazing to me, because I feel like amputated limbs are so underrepresented in dolls. Compared to their Gen 1 counterpart, they are taller, with a shorter torso, and longer legs. As a tall gal myself, I appreciate the extra height. Draculaura, on the other hand, is one of the shortest dolls, and has the thickest body type. Now, I will say, I don't think this actually counts as plus size. If anything, it's only plus size in comparison to other dolls, but if she existed in real life, I doubt hers would be considered a bigger body. However, this is a step in the right direction. When I was a chubby little kid, fat dolls didn't exist, and the fact that Mattel has started making bigger dolls both in Monster High and other lines like Barbie is really exciting to me. It warms my fat heart. Something that I'm also happy about is the bigger hands that the Gen 3 dolls have. I feel like overall their proportions are much more realistic and balanced than the Gen 1 dolls. Their feet are slightly wider and flatter than the Gen 1 dolls, but are almost exactly the same as Rainbow High doll feet. That's neat. They can share shoes now. The more expensive Gen 3 dolls also come with chest articulation, which makes it easier to pose them in different ways. Also, look at Frankie's cute ears. I love them. All in all, I'm really happy about a lot of the changes they made in the new generation. So happy, in fact 
that I decided it might be time to revamp my Miniano. I know in her original video I said that she's not necessarily supposed to look exactly like me, but I fell in love with this new Draculaura body and I just had to have it for my doll. I'm going to start by dyeing her body a color that's closer to the Gigi head I use. I was scared so I did this off camera, but I tried it on my mannequin doll first, and I'm glad I did. My first attempt was not great, but it was a learning curve and here's what I figured out. Different parts of the body die at different rates, so it's better to do them separately so you'll have more control. The vinyl heads, hands and forearms die the fastest. The plastic body can get splotchy easily, so dip it in quickly and wash it off with cool water right away. Repeat that until you get a dark enough colour. The lower legs rarely take any of the dye, so you might have to fix that later. The longer the doll is in the hot water, the looser the joints will get, especially around the hips. So work fast if you can. Here's how she came out directly after dying. Not the worst but as you can see, it's still kind of uneven and splotchy in some areas. The lower legs also didn't really die at all, and there are some marks on her thighs now. So, I took her outside for a spray of Citadel, wearing a respirator mask of course, and tried to even out the colour using soft pastels. I think she came out pretty good. Not bad for a first try at least. Because of her new body type, most of my old outfit won't fit anymore, so we have to fix that. I unraveled the original skirt so that I could repurpose the chain, fabric, and zipper for the new one. The skirt piece is already hemmed, so now I just need to fold it into pleats to form the new skirt. I mark off sections on the fabric, alternating between 1cm and 2cm before struggling to figure out how to fold the fabric so it actually makes pleats. Eventually, I figured it out, so here's what I did. I only folded the fabric on the one centimeter sections. First, I folded inwards and then outwards so that the end of the one centimeter section meets the middle of the two centimeter section that came before it. Once I've done that, I can pin it in place. Does that make sense? Fold in, fold out, and pin. Eventually, I have a skirt full of pleats. I also cut a waistband that's the same width. I compare the skirt piece to the zipper to cut it shorter, but I probably should have done this after attaching the waistband. I carefully heat seal the ends so it won't unravel. I decided to only use the black lace this time. As much as I love the poofy skirt, Draculaura's silhouette looked better with something more understated. So I run a gathering stitch through it, and once it's sufficiently ruffled, I can sew both the skirt and the lace pieces to the waistband. The waistband was too wide on Draculaura, so I folded it double and sewed it down before adding the zipper and a ribbon to catch the crotch. The original socks kinda fit, but they have to stretch, so the paint cracks. So I'm gonna make new ones. I start by cutting rectangles vaguely the size of her legs and hemming one edge. Then I wrap them around her legs, wrong sides facing out, and sew along the edge while stretching them tight. Once that's done, I just need to trim away the excess, turn them over, and I have socks! To finish them, I use acrylic paint to add the two pink stripes while they're on her legs. It's important to paint it while it's on the doll, otherwise the paint could crack again when it stretches over her calves. Just remember to protect her with some plastic wrap or something. So cute! Because she now has different feet, she'll need new sneakers. I leave the socks on and wrap her legs in plastic wrap and a thick layer of masking tape. Then I use some white Sculpey Souffle to form basic triangular shoe bases and the tip of the shoe. Once that's done, I use a sculpting tool to add some details. 
and roll out a flat piece of clay to form that rough part of the sole. When both of them are done, I can carefully remove the doll and bake them in the oven for 30 minutes. After baking, I noticed some fluff and stuff stuck to the clay, so I decided to paint over them with white acrylics. I also wanted to replicate those pink lines the original shoes had, so I painted those with a thin brush before sealing everything in with a few layers of matte varnish. Now to add the rest of the shoe by cutting these pattern pieces from two different shades of pink felt. I fold the darker pink felt in half and cut the body of the shoe on the fold. Then cut the tongue of the shoe from the lighter pink felt. Do that twice and you should be left with pieces like this. Now I can attach the body of the shoe to the outer edge of the shoe base and the tongue of the shoe underneath the tip of it. I take some all-purpose tacky glue and squirt a generous amount all around the inside of the shoe base. Then I place the body of the shoe in there and squish it around with a pen until it looks right. I add some glue to the tongue and squish that in there too. While that dries, I like to cover the doll in cling wrap and put the feet in. That way I know it's going to fit once it's dry. And look, she can even stand on her own with these shoes on. I finish them off by adding some cute laces with pink embroidery thread. After waiting for some rainy weather to pass, and deciding whether or not I really wanted to do this, it was time to tackle the face. I love how my mini-me looks, but no matter what I do, her face has been too shiny since the day I made her. The varnish on her eyes and lips have also gotten sticky, so it's time for a redo. I used some 100% acetone to get the old face off, and let me tell you, I had to really scrub to get the varnish off. When she was all clean, I went over her face with a wet wipe to remove any leftover acetone. Interestingly, the purple soft pastels stained her face a little bit, but I'll be going over that again anyway, so it didn't bug me. I gave her a spray of Citadel to give the vinyl some tooth again. Like I did the first time, I add some pink soft pastels for shading around her eyes, forehead, nose, and mouth. Something I didn't do the first time, but a tip I've since picked up from Jackie O, is to add some light blue shading in some areas of the face to give it more depth. I use some pink and red to shade her lips, and add purple again around her eyes. Then I add some black pastels in the general shape of her eyebrows, and use a kneaded eraser to shape them and even them out. At this point, I decided to add the head to the body again to see how it matched. Looks good, so I spray her again with Citadel before going in with my pencils. I use a lighter pencil to sketch out the basic shape of the eye. But I'm ignoring the existing sculpt and giving her almond-shaped eyes that squidge up like mine do when I smile. I use a white pencil to add some highlights to her nose and cupid's bow, since those are prominent features on my face. Then I use a red pencil to add lines on her lips. From there, I use a variety of darker pencils and pastels to accentuate what I already drew, and use a dark pink to sketch in her irises. A good rule of thumb is to try and leave more of the sclera visible on the outer corner of the eye than the inner corner. That way, the eyes look forward instead of outward. I use a variety of red and pink pencils to add color to her irises, and my black pencil to sketch individual brow hairs. They came out thinner this time, but I think that's more accurate since my own eyebrows are kinda sparse. I use my black pencil to sketch her eyeliner and add some beauty spots. I added some white to her sclera, and tried my best to draw some dainty eyelashes. I also add her irises. At that point, it was time to bust out the acrylics and add some contrast. I add white to brighten the sclera, and a soft pink color to her water lines. Then I use various shades of pink to add depth to her irises. I also add highlights to her face using a light pink. Then I can finally take a thin brush and some black to darken her eyeliner 
eyelashes, eyebrows, and pupils. For some pizzazz, I add white catch lights using a dotting tool. While I had my paints out, I also added her black nails. Now she can finally be released from her hair burrito to reveal... <laughs> Let's fix that, shall we? I combed her hair out using my pet brush to remove the tangles. If you have curly hair and your friends ask you why you don't comb your hair when it's dry, show them this. I should have done this sooner, but I also decided to cut off her human ears before styling her hair. It doesn't make sense to have cat and human ears, right? I curled her hair again off camera like I did the first time, and now she's back to looking appropriately poofy. And with that, she's done. So, what do you think? I'm really happy I did this. Part of me will always miss my original Miniana, but I think I managed to keep everything that made me love her in the first place. Her new face seems slightly more relaxed than in the first one, but in a way I feel like that suits me too. What do you think about the pleated skirt? I like it. I think it's closer to my concept art than the first one was, and I think it looks good with the new wider hips. And I'm really happy with her little sneakers. They were my favorite part of the old outfit, so I'm glad the new ones look equally cute. I only realized while writing the voiceover for this that I forgot her tattoo. <laughs> I'll have to add that later. If you made it this far, Thank you so much for watching and coming along on this journey. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to repaint my mini-me, but who knows? <laughs> if you liked this video, please consider giving it a big old-fashioned thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you're a new viewer. Leave a comment down below and let me know how you feel about the new mini -Anna. Only problem now is I don't know what to do with her old body. Leave a comment if you have any ideas. This year is going to be filled with a lot of exciting things, and sometime soon I'll be hosting my very own collab. It's going to be great! So, if you don't want to miss that when it comes out, boop that like button, stick around, and as always, stay golden! Bye! Okay. Oh.